So here in Jacksonville, there is a bookstore called the Chamblin Bookmine. And this enormous 23,000 square foot repository, which has been in operation since 1976, is a sanctuary for book lovers. I make it a point to visit this literary labyrinth at least once every month. I always look forward to this ritual with eagerness, but I will confess that if I visited more often, it would undoubtedly raise my wife's eyebrows. She is quite understanding, but there's only so much space in our home for my ever-growing physical collection of books. Nonetheless, I am excited to share with you all the treasures that I have unearthed from the depths of the mine this month. Okay, first up, is the entire Mars series from Kim Stanley Robinson. These are just mass market paperbacks, nothing special, but they are in pretty decent shape. This trilogy is on my list of shame, books that as a reader of hard sci-fi, I should have read by now. Red Mars, Green Mars, and Blue Mars, I believe, is the order of the trilogy, which focuses on colonizing, terraforming, and inhabiting the Red Planet long term. And then uh, The Martians is a short story collection set in the same universe as the Mars trilogy. The Many Colored Land by Julian May, the first book in her Saga of Pliocene Exile series, which is very likely her best known work. This book apparently has aliens and time travelers and comes highly recommended by Peter F. Hamilton himself. Again, it's just a little mass market paperback, not even in very good condition. The spine has certainly seen better days, but uh, nonetheless, a readable copy. Okay, these are books that are, for me, more of a novelty than anything else. The Understanding Physics series by Isaac Asimov. Pop Psy books written in the 60s, regarded as an accessible and user-friendly guide to the realms of physics, crafted specifically for the general public. Volume 1 is uh, Light, Magnetism, and Electricity. I love these simple, abstract covers. Volume 2 is Motion, Sound, and Heat. And then my favorite cover, the Electron, Proton, and Neutron. What a cool cover. Waystation by Clifford Simak, a pioneer of pastoral sci-fi. Last year, I read Simak's City, a fix-up that presents these short stories as academic discussions by evolved canines in a post-human world. It's a book that challenges our own conceptions of legacy, memory, and the impermanence of our species, and contains a remarkable amount of humanity for a book with very few human characters. This one is probably his most well-known work, having won the Hugo Award in 1964 for Best Novel. I'm excited about this one. All right, here are two books by Hal Clement, Mission of Gravity and its sequel, Starlight. Originally serialized in Astounding Science Fiction in 1953, Mission of Gravity is notably recognized for its planetary world building, as well as for being the first sci-fi novel to incorporate real observational data about a potential interstellar system. I was able to acquire a substantial collection of D.G. Compton books here, all in decent condition considering the years. 
Uh, last year, I read Farewell Earth's Bliss, and I enjoyed it quite a bit. It's a fairly bleak book that tackles heavy and complex themes like religious fanaticism, racism, classism, and capital punishment, and it handles these themes with remarkable depth and nuance. It really put Compton on my radar as a skilled contributor to science fiction. So in this hall within a hall, I picked up in chronological order The Quality of Mercy, 1965, his first novel going by DG instead of Guy, under which he wrote several uh, crime novels. Synthajoy, Joy, 1968, a novel dealing with the consequences of virtual reality. The cyberpunk genre supposedly stands on Synthajoy's Joy's shoulders. Chronicules, 1971. Chronicules? Not sure of the pronunciation here, but this is an awesome cover. The Unsleeping Eye, 1974, which I didn't realize is an alternate title to The Continuous Catherine Mortonhoe, which is arguably his most well-known work, probably because of its 1979 film adaptation, Death Watch. The Missionaries, 1975, another awesome cover. And A Usual Lunacy, 1978. Compton apparently passed away in November of 2023, so rest in peace, D.G. Compton. So last year, I read Fuzzy Nation by John Scalzi, which I absolutely loved. And today, I found the books that that one is based off of. The Fuzzy Papers by H. Beam Piper collects the first two fuzzy novels, Little Fuzzy and Fuzzy Sapiens, 1964, and then... Fuzzies and Other People, the third fuzzy novel. I was flipping through them, and I, I don't know why I didn't expect this, but the protagonist from Scalzi's book is the same one in these books. Here are a couple of related books by Werner Vinge. The Peace War, 1984, and... Marooned in Real Time, 1986. I love Benji. A Fire Upon the Deep is an absolute space opera masterpiece. I picked up this nice little modern library edition of Zamiatin's We, a masterpiece of dystopian fiction that inspired both Huxley and Orwell. I love these modern library classics editions. A Nice looking edition of the Medusa Chronicles by Stephen Baxter and Alistair Reynolds. This is a sequel to Arthur C. Clarke's A Meeting with Medusa, which I did not realize and have not read. So this one is going to have to wait. Piranesi by Susanna Clarke. The only brand new book I picked up today. This book comes highly recommended by a good friend of mine whose opinions I trust. And so I will be giving this one a shot probably in the first quarter of this year. I really like this edition a lot because I am a total sucker for gold foiling. <laughs> Three more, it looks like. OK, this one was just crazy to find at Chamblin because it comes from this Slovenian indie publisher called Corona Samizdat. She sang to them, She Sang, by W.D. Clark. I have read one other Corona Samizdat book, and that was America and the Cult of the Cactus Boots, which was this extremely weird metafictional hero's journey. So I'm very curious to see what this book offers. Two more. Midsummer Century by James Blish, a well-kept little book club edition of this 1972 novella. 
I love Blish. I love his work on the Star Trek novelizations. I love The Seedling Stars. I love Cities in Flight. Blish is another one of those vintage sci-fi writers whose prose elevated his work beyond what is expected of genre fiction. Big fan of Blish. And then finally, a hardcover edition of Alan Moore's Voice of the Fire in exceptionally good shape. I've not read this one. I have read Jerusalem, which was a rough read for me for a variety of reasons. This one was Moore's first novel, and I understand that it is challenging in different ways than Jerusalem is challenging, but I have been interested in this one for a while now, so I was excited to nab this copy. 27 books in total. Not bad. I've definitely had larger book hauls, but this one's decent quality as far as I'm concerned. Have you read any of these gems? If so, what are your thoughts? Let me know down below. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. A new video every week. I'll see you in the next one.